Hey everybody, this is Bill here from the Dollar Bill Club, and in this video we're going to talk about how to learn tunes fast, how to memorize songs, and how to prepare for a gig on very short notice. So before we even get started with that, there's a concept that I want you to understand, and I'm going to quote one of my acting coaches. His name is George Penny, and he said, The idea of perfect posture is to be able to jump in any position at any given point in time with little to no adjustment. Now, in this scenario, we're not talking about posture in terms of how you sit and how your shoulders are. I'm talking about posture as a metaphor to how you are as a musician in life. We need to have perfect posture at any given point in time, so if the phone rings for any sort of gig, we need to be ready, we need to be prepared to be able to take that gig and capitalize upon that. So that's the first part to be able to learn songs fast, to be prepared for a gig fast, is by having that perfect posture. Again, perfect posture being a metaphor for your positioning, your overall grooming, and your training as a musician. Just last weekend, I played at the Ground Up Festival in Miami, Florida. Now, Ground Up Festival was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you don't know what Ground Up Festival is, Ground Up Music is the label that Snarky Puppy is under, and it's run by Michael League. Um, and it's it's really awesome music label. And the festival just started last year, and it's a really really cool event. All right, they have amazing artists under that label, and other artists under not under that label involved in the event. So at this music festival. The festival starts Friday and I get a phone call from Sean Martin of Snarky Puppy on Thursday night. Actually, it wasn't even a phone call, it was a text message that said, hey man, I'm gonna be in town Friday, tomorrow night, you down to play. What am I gonna say? Of course I'm gonna say yes. Now, that goes back to having perfect posture. I have to be able to say yes with confidence that, yeah man, I'm ready to go, I can play, and not like, oh hey man, I haven't played my horn in a couple weeks, I'm not sure, like, let me play and see how I'm feeling. Like, I have to be ready to go at a moment's notice. So again, Sean texts me the set list at like Thursday evening, about 24 hours away from the gig, and I have six songs that I have to learn, and I have to cram it, and I can't bring sheet music to this gig. It's not like I can show up with the charts and be like, hey, I'm ready, and put on a music stand. That's just not how it works. I have to make sure I know these tunes back to front, and I have them memorized, right? I'm playing with like seven time Grammy award winning player, and I can't show up unprepared for this. So how do I learn songs that fast? Well, for me, my approach is I never touch my instrument into the last possible second when it comes to learning songs, right? I will spend as much time as I can preparing myself by listening to the tunes in my ears. So I already had my day planned out Friday. I was not planning on going to Ground Up Festival at all. I was planning on chilling. I was going to hang out with my fiance. We're going to go to the pool. We're going to go out to dinner. We're going to do all these things. And I can't all of a sudden just change all my plans to accommodate this new gig. So how do I fit my learning within my regular routine that I was doing? Right? Well, I knew I was going to wake up in the morning and I was going to go running. Right? So before I went for the run, I woke up and I put these songs on. I created a Spotify playlist and I just had all these songs back to back. The six songs and I had them playing in the morning. Then when I went for my run, that was my playlist in the run. I had that in my ears and I can hear that bass part. I can kind of lock down to that and, and start to teach myself the chordal structure of that song. Ultimately, you should be able to sing that song and have it kind of stuck in your head just like you would know Mary Had a Little Lamb, right? If I ask you to sing Mary Had a Little Lamb, you say, okay, sure. You can at least hum the melody because it's so familiar, it's so ingrained and stuck in your head. Where this music, anytime you're preparing music, you should have it at that same level of preparation where it's just stuck in your head all the time, right? And you can ask my fiance, anytime that I have a gig coming up, she knows the songs better than most people showing up to that gig because she hears me playing them over and over and over again. And I'm, again, I'm not playing them on my instrument, I'm just listening to them, it's on my radio. If I'm getting ready, if I'm taking a shower, I always have that music going so it's ingrained in my head. Now, for that gig specifically, around Friday, around noon, I had about an hour I can sit down and play. By the time I sat down and play, I've already listened to the songs. I went for a run, I went for about an hour run in the morning. I listened to the whole set list a few times, so I had a general gist of the songs. So when I actually sat down to play my instrument, it really wasn't a big deal. I already could sing the songs in my head. I already knew what was going on. So I'm not listening through methodically and trying to memorize the tune. I'm just listening purely for enjoyment purposes, right? And you start to absorb those things without overly critically thinking about it. So this is all about just making best use of your time, right? You're gonna have a busy schedule. Right now, I had Ground Up Festival last weekend. Right now, I'm in Chicago, about to go to Iowa. 
and I have a gig with Matthew Whitaker next week. He's a great B3 player. I have another show before that next week doing an experimental hip hop thing with my friend Drew Tucker on vibraphone. It's just a duo. So I have a bunch of songs I have to learn for that. And then I have a four day uh, intensive with postmodern jukebox tap dancer Sarah Reich. And she's awesome. So I have a ton of music that I have to learn in the next like 30 days. And then we're going to New York after that to do this showcase thing up in New York. So my schedule is super busy. So I don't have time to really sit with my instrument a lot of times. Like right now I'm sitting in an airport talking on this video because I just don't have time to go home to my studio and do like a formal setup for this. So again, it's all about being smart with your time. So think of how many times throughout a day that you might not be doing anything. And you're just kind of sitting around. That's a perfect opportunity for you to learn new songs and to prepare those things. I promise you this process works 100% of the time. This is a technique that I learned when I was playing at church every Sunday and we had to learn five to six new songs every week and I just didn't have time in my schedule to sit down and practice this stuff. So I just always had it in my ears and when I showed up Sunday morning, that was literally the first time I played through the tunes. And I was always the most prepared person there because I knew the songs holistically by ear more than anybody else did. And the trap that we have to be careful of, musicians, is, is feeling like we always have a bunch of time to work on stuff. Like I always have high school students that are working on solo and ensemble music for next year. I'm like, if I could just get another six months in on this piece, I'm going to be ready. But that's just not realistic. Nobody ever has six months to work on something, right? You have a weekend, you may have a couple weeks, you may have a month at most to work on a tune, and then you have a concert. You have to be able to pump it out and sound good. So all that being said, here's a couple pointers that I recommend doing in organizing this process of learning songs. Number one, write down all the songs that you need to know. Like literally make a list, all right? It could be on your phone, it could be on a piece of paper. I like to write it on paper because I like having a physical copy of that. And I'll write everything down, right? Say it's 10 songs. I'll write those 10 songs down, no specific order. And then I will make a playlist with all 10 of those songs on either my Spotify or Apple Music. And I'll have that in my ears. Then I'll spend as much time as I can with that music in my ears, trying to just learn it and just memorizing it by just listening and enjoying the music. Then after that, I go and sit back down and I prioritize my practice, right? So within the 10 songs that I may have written down, there's three that are a doozy. I know I need to work on these tunes because these have some tough changes. Maybe these have some difficult licks. I'm probably gonna have to spend time on these more. So I spend the most time on those and then I filter out everything else from there. Now, most gigs that I play, I have to have the music memorized. I can't show up with sheet music, right? But it doesn't mean that I don't have notes. So notes are always an important thing because there's certain times where you just, it's hard to remember stuff and you may need a quick refresher. So anytime I show up to a gig, I have two things with me. I have a set of headphones and I have notes. So as I was learning this music and I sat down to practice, I just wrote down notes for every song. So I know, hey, it's in this key, it's this, here's a lick that you need to know that you may forget. And I always keep those notes and I always bring that with me in a gig and I literally keep that in my pocket. It's usually one sheet of paper that's all scribbled up that I have kind of organized, at least so I understand it, so I can follow along. So if someone says, hey, let's do this song, and I can't remember it off the top of my head, I have a quick reference that I can look at. The second thing that I always bring is headphones, right? Just in case I, I really blank out on something, I could put in my headphones and listen for a second and go, okay, that's the tempo, this is the song, and this is the horn lick, all right? So if I need a little bit of extra prep time, if I'm backstage, if I'm in the dressing room, I can always put in my headphones and kind of just re-remind myself of how this tune goes. So again, the goal is always just to be ready. We always have to be ready for that call. We never know what the next gig is gonna be, and you never wanna turn down a gig because you don't feel like you're ready. Then from there, train your ears first, and then train your chops last. Your ear is the most valuable asset in learning tunes. This is not. So if you have any questions, feel free to log on to the Dollar Bill Club campus. I'd be happy to answer them. I'm gonna go right now because I'm getting a bunch of crazy looks. Everybody's staring at me, looking into my camera, talking to myself. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. And again, have any questions, hit me up.